Hi, how you doing folks? My name is Frog and this is Frog's Prop Shop. Oh, in this video and well, hopefully a good few videos to come, we're going to be trying to look at building props and prop replicas uh, with a couple of cosplay items. We'll be looking at how to build them the cheapest, basically. Uh, you might not find absolute 100% accuracy in a lot of things, but you will find that it should work for cosplay. Today's video we will mainly be focusing on this. A few comic book fans out there recognise Jay Garrick's helmet, the original Flash from the Golden Age. We'll be looking at how to build this. Now this particular prop, or replica, or cosplay piece, I built for less than £10. Uh, possibly less than £5 actually, with the parts I already had. So it's just spray paint and things like that. Uh, if you don't already have these things, you can pick them up in any store. Uh, if you've got a pound shop near you, a 99 pence store, a pound land, you can pick up a lot of things there. Some of the things you might need to pick up off of eBay. Now to give you an idea of things that I've made in the past and things that I will be making videos about in the future, my personal favourite, my bit of my pride and joy, would be this here. This is a replica starter Pokemon set based on the first generation Pokemon games. Three custom built Pokeballs, each one, you can't see that well because of the light, but let's turn it out. each one with its own coloured light and label for what Pokemon is in it. What I will be doing is I go on with this build, is I'm going to get a bit of labelling for the briefcase itself. Uh, I'm thinking of like uh, Oaks Lab Pallet Town, something like that. I'm not 100% sure yet. It's just a bit of a, still a bit of a work in progress, but the thing's basically 100% complete. Uh, planning using it someday at a con, maybe as a Professor Oak cosplay. Just carry it about with me, display them now and then for photographs or things like that. Uh, the Pokeballs themselves are basic toys, very cheap. And the lights are Halo LEDs, which are usually used as uh, car parts, things like that. But that we will be covering them in a future video. Right now it is the first video, so we're going to start with something very simple and something very cheap. For what we're going to be building, uh, we will put, I'll say we, I, I will put descriptions in the... Uh, description section telling you where you can pick up these items in order to build this uh, obviously you can personalize it yourself if you think the wings are too large you can make them smaller personally I like the larger ones I think it's more of the comic book feel but if you want to go with uh, such the TV show obviously you can customize it yourself to your exact preferences but I'll show you how to build the standard wing uh, how to give it a good paint effect. My one personally, I have sort of a tarnished effect to the steel. You can see a bit of black in it. Uh, but that's just my personal preference. The one that I'm going to be building, I'm not going to tarnish, but I will tell you how to do it yourself. I won't be tarnishing this one straight away because I will be building it for a friend of mine who I'm going to be giving it to as a gift. Uh, just because he's a bit of a comic book display set at the moment. It's all uh, DC Comics. Mainly Green Lantern, Superman, Batman. He does have a flash in there, but uh, personally, there's nothing better than a bit of Jay Garrick. I have the extra helmet, I've got all the parts I need. You will, for this build, you will be needing the costume helmet, which you can pick up off of eBay for next to nothing. Uh, the only thing is in the shipment, mine personally was a little bit bashed, but. Once again, it's an old helmet. It's meant to look old. It's Jay Garrick's from it was Jay Garrick's father's actually from uh, the First World War, I believe. So it's gonna have a couple of dents in that. And anyway, you believe the gold wings are uh, made out of foam. We'll be putting them together ourselves and attaching the wings. I've not quite finished that on this particular helmet, but we will be completing it in the one that we'll be building. Uh, you can still see there's some uh, visible screw there and there which will be covered 
Uh, I'm going to cover that in uh, some hot glue and then a bit of gold paint over the hot glue just to blend it in with the wing itself. Uh, the wing could actually do with a couple of touches in my one. I've got a couple of wee bits in the indents that I'll be touching up with some paint as well. But the one that I'll be making for a gift, you'll see that one completely clear. Now, like I said, you will be needing the plastic helmet, you'll be needing some uh, foam. Just standard craft foam, nothing fancy. The thinner the foam, the better. Because we're going to be gluing it together and it will become more structurally sound as we glue it. Uh, we'll be PVA, we'll be using, just something nice and simple. Uh, my one I use super glue, but we will attempt with PVA. If need be, we'll super glue it, PVA should work fine. Uh, we'll, we will need a hot glue gun, which is something that not everybody has. But to be honest, you can pick them up very cheap online if you need to. Uh, eBay is a fantastic place for that sort of thing, you can pick them up very, very cheap. The, same the glue sticks, you pick them up, they work very well. But, uh, we will be using some uh, putty as well, it will be the links of join us putty or something like that. Once again, 99 pence shops, that sort of thing, Poundland, go down there, you can pick up basically everything you need. Uh, I'm halfway through a hand solo blaster build that so far everything I've picked up at a pound shop. Uh, so far I've spent three pounds on it. Uh, and I'm literally going to have to spend like one more pound and it'll be complete and then that's it ready for painting. In the future we'll be working on a couple of other things. Like I said, I will be showing you a Ash Williams cosplay, which I built for Halloween last year. The likes of the shotgun was probably the most expensive part. Uh, but I'll be showing you how to do the belt harness, so you pick up a bunch of old belts, so you can go and pick up at charity shops and things like that. Brown belts aren't exactly hard to come by. An old blue shirt and... Once again, charity shop, you pick it up, you rip the arm off it, you know, do all the basics. Then all you need is a pair of brown trousers and a pair of boots and you're basically ready to go. The chainsaw hand is something that we will be working on in the future. Uh, that's going to be an expensive build, uh, mainly because the prop chainsaws can be quite expensive. Uh, you will be talking about, I'll, personally I'm looking for a motorised one. You know, one of the toys that will actually go round. Makes it a wee bit more fun, because uh, I will be wanting to wear it for a a future con. The chainsaw that I had for it was, you know, the standard Halloween wee rubbish ones. A cardboard box as well for the main base to put the blade through. Gave a quick paint job. Stuck a, a die on things on it. Nothing fancy. Um, but yeah, we're, uh, I suppose we'll get started and we will start with the Golden Age Flash J. Garrick helmet. So like I said, we'll start with the helmet. Basic helmet, bought it off of eBay, cheap as anything. It's literally made out of the sort of stuff that you would use, like get like, Halloween masks made out of when you were a kid. Uh, I believe the helmet was, I want to say like a pound and seventy or something like that. Uh, also, put a link in the description and you'll be able to judge for yourself. Uh, but it was very, very cheap, next to nothing. So we're going to start with our basic silver spray paint on it. Like I said, you can see there are some light imperfections in the helmet. A couple of small dents. I don't know if the camera will pick that up. Uh, but like I said, I mean, it's a World War One helmet. It's going to have a few dents in it. A couple of, a couple of close calls maybe. Uh, a couple of bullet ricochets, something like that. But we won't focus on that too much. Uh, one of the letdowns. On the helmet, personally, is when it came, it had a chin strap on it. Just a elastic band, rubber band, chin strap. And for that, they'd already put holes in it. You see there and there. Now, the holes are not perfectly aligned. You see, when you actually turn it so it says full length, top to bottom, this hole is lower down than this one. But like I said, nothing in this is going to be 100% perfect. Now, if you just turn it slightly, they align. So when you're wearing the helmet, you might notice it's sitting slightly squint, but as it's an old helmet around top and things, that's not something that's going to be noticeable. It's not something that's going to be noticeable when it's on display either, if you're wanting to have it as a display piece. So, uh, step one, silver spray paint. Well, folks, welcome to my garden. We're going to give this quick spray paint. 
And obviously best to doors, unless you have a well ventilated place. You forgive me for the shaky camera, I'm doing this with one hand and filming it on an iPad. So we'll use standard silver spray paint, nothing special, metallic spray paint, bought from Wilkinson's. You can obviously just buy anybody you want. So, let's go. So of course I just noticed here in my filming genius for my first video, the camera was very off centre. Uh, we were just trying to hold it with one hand and obviously I was uh, I wasn't holding in portrait view because I don't want to commit YouTube suicide. Uh, so the camera was off to the left. So uh, let's try that again with the inside of the helmet and hopefully you'll be able to see the bit of spray paint technique. Although I'm fairly certain most people wouldn't out there know how to, you know, Use spray paint. Right, so standard even strokes back and forth. Bit of glass stuck to there. Right, so like I said, it's nothing fancy, standard spray paint. And there's the inside done as well. Pick up any bits you missed. Right, now to the inside where we will start on the wings. So like I said, the next part is going to be the wings. We're going to start with just drawing out the wing, just one of them on a bit of paper, just to get the general size of it, the idea of it. So I have drawn my basic design for the wing. Now it might take you two or three tries to get it to the right shape or size or whatever you want. Uh, I think I've got mine right here. I'm just going to cut it out now. So, like I've said, the uh, wing's cut out here. Now it was nice, very simple, small wing. Nothing too big, nothing too fancy. Uh, very square shapes. Obviously you can go for a more stylized wing, you can go for the you know, more feathered wing if you like, if you feel like being a bit more artistic, if you feel like going with the, the original, original comic book design from like literally the original issues. But uh, I like more, the slightly more modern, uh, later GSA designs before the new 52 fucked everything up. Uh, so we'll use this as our cutout point and I will show you step by step how we're going to cut out the parts in the foam. Now we're going to be doing this in three layers. Because as you can see there's three sets to the wing, three sets, three parts to the wing I suppose. Uh, three feathers, I don't know, but we'll get this started and I'll show you what I mean as we go along. Okay, so any bit of foam will do. I'm just using nice thin standard craft foam, nothing fancy, and we'll get started on this. Now what you want to do is set your wing down. It's fine, sometimes you're better putting it as close to an edge as possible. It gives you a lot less work to do. Then just roughly draw around it. Now, like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect as long as you've got the rough outline on it, you'll know where to cut. Sorry about this terrible camera angle, I'm sure all you can see is a random Scotsman's arm there now. Right. So, there's one basic outline, and then what we'll be wanting to do now is we're going to cut out the small section here, the bottom one, and uh, just use standard scissors. Nothing. Don't need an exacto knife or anything like that. Nothing. Nothing fancy here, mate. Right. Try to be as precise as you can though, just because we're not fancy doesn't mean we don't want it to look good. So, the bit with the, I suppose we'll just keep calling them feathers, two feathers. 
at that straight above here and we'll draw the outline again try and minimize how much foam we use by putting these as close together as possible so like I say we're doing this as cheap as we can and the more foam we save the more foam we can use for a future project because we are that cheap Apparently it's a thing around the world that Scotsmen are generally cheap. I've never understood where that's came from. I've always found it a very interesting stereotype. Uh, but I've got to say I'm really not. I'm very bad with money actually. Right. And there's number two done. So once again, same thing. We're going to cut out this one here. here next to that one. Now what are we going to do about the other one I hear you all cry out? Well because we've already going to have the three foam parts for one wing we're just going to use them and copy the outline from those in order to do the second wing. Right, so we're going to cut our three parts out uh, and I'm going to show you how they sit together and then what we'll do is we'll cut off any imperfections if it's not quite sitting perfectly and I think we'll do a jump cut here because I'm sure you don't want to watch me cut out foam. Right, so we've cut out our shapes, our foam shapes, one, So what we're going to do is we're going to layer them one on top of the other, try and put them as close exactly as we can. Now I'm sure most of you will be able to recognise that, it just gives it a nice 3D shape, makes it look a lot better. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use PVA glue and we're going to glue these three layers together. So we'll glue them together and see how it turns out. Now before we do start gluing things together and like that we obviously have to make the second wing so you will just use your three parts, trace around them in another bit of foam or if you've got foam left from your previous wing use that. Like I said we're, we're going as cheap as we can here. Uh, the whole point in this is I don't have the kind of money the, the likes of Cosplay Chris or uh, many of the other YouTubers out there have who make these things. So I am trying to do this on as thin a budget as possible, eh, not just for me but for you as well. I understand there's a lot of, lot of guys out there that, you know, your family support, things like that. You're not going to have the sort of spare money just to go and buy replicas or just spend a fortune in stupid things like, you know, 500 pack of craft foam and things like that. Eh, God, I sound so cheap like that. I, I take back what I was saying about the cheap Scots. I mean, I think, um, I think maybe that is a stereotype, and I think it, it might work. Uh, we're all screws in the dunk here, mate. So, we'll trace these individual parts out again in another bit of foam. We'll cut them out, and then all you need to do is obviously put them in the reverse order, flip them round for the second wing, and glue them together. Once we've glued them together, we'll we look at the edges, see if anything sort of overlapping from underneath, and just sort of trim it off with scissors, just take a wee bit of care with it. Uh, after that, we'll paint the wings, and then we'll look at how to fit them onto the helmet. Now, we've cut out the bottom, so we're going to want to glue them together like this. Obviously try and level them out the best you can while the glue dries so that the back ones don't display too much over the front ones. The only bits you really want displayed is the likes of the feathering underneath each layer. You want that to display, but the rest of it you don't. 
Now we will be trimming off the edges now after we've glued it, let it dry. Uh, just sort of trimming off the back edges, checking things like that. Now when you layer them up, make sure you've layered them so, I know it sort of says to itself, but layer them up so they're both facing two different directions because, you know, mistakes happen. So we make sure they're layered up for two separate directions. So we'll get these glued together, we'll let the PVA dry, and then we'll trim off the edges to be a bit more precise. After that, we'll get it fixed onto the helmet. So the wings are glued, they're drying. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our scissors and we're just going to check the edges. Look for any imperfections around the edges that are going to be visible from the side on perspective. Okay. So what you just want to do is just trim a little bit, let's just check, there's nothing there. Yeah, glue's not 100% drying, but it's squeezed out now. Doesn't matter, it's, as long as it's mostly dry. Take a hair dryer or something to it if you have to. You can do that with PVA, most white glues will dry in heat. When you're cutting the bottom, what you want to do is try and get a bit of a slope because obviously it's going to be going against the helmet so you want to be cutting it so it's raising as it goes in towards the helmet so try and get a small angle and try and cut I don't know if you can see there so it's going out a little that way so do this with both sides and then we'll maybe let this dry a little bit longer and then we'll spray paint the gold and see how it fits so while we're waiting for the wings to dry we're going to put the fixings on the helmet to hold the wings on so what you'll need is two small screws smaller the better decent sized head on it fit it through the hole that's already in the cap We'll use this out. DIY putty, standard pound shop stuff. You've seen it before. You unwrap it and you mold it, mixing two colours together in it. And that's how you prepare it. The stuff hardens very well good for holding stuff like this in place. So you just mix it until the colours have perfectly mixed. Two to three seconds. And then once it's all ready, you'll put it under the base of the screw and the underside of the hat to try and hold the screw in place. You don't need too much of it. Just break a wee bit off, fit it onto the screw head and put it in place. Now what you're going to want to do is try and get the screw pointing as upwards, as straight up as you can. So make sure it's not leaning one way or the other. It's not going to make too much of a difference to be honest, but you want it in place up the way as much as possible you can see there try and have it standing and it doesn't really matter too much with the putty underneath it doesn't matter if it's too blobby you won't really see much of it once the helmet's on it's not the sort of thing that's really going to be too visible so you want to do that on both sides now like I said the holes aren't precise it's up to yourself, I mean if you want to get really technical you can attempt to cover the holes maybe try and put some of the putty in them and sand it down, you know, whatever but uh, for the sake of quickness, simplicity we'll just use the holes that are there Now 
your drying time this stuff doesn't actually take too long but there we go that on see I've got the screw there and the screw there drying time I think is very long on these sort of things eh? throws down is very fast drying doesn't actually even see on it Oh, ready to use and says five minutes apparently. Five minutes my whole will be about fifteen or something. Yeah. We'll leave that to dry. And uh well, that's drying. I'll be checking the wings, see how they're looking, and then we'll look at fitting them on. Now we're gonna hot glue them on. Uh, they say if you don't have a hot glue gun, you maybe super glue them on, but then you're gonna have the screw showing out the back. And it can be a bit of a mess. Now, I've seen folk do this and try and put the screw inside the wing. It doesn't really work too well. Uh, I mean, it can work if you put in the effort and the time. And if uh, when you were originally learning it, if you took the, the middle layer and cut up into it so that you had an indent already in the middle of the three layers, you just put a glue in it and fit it on. Uh, we didn't do that. I'm second guessing for that actually would have been a good idea or not. Maybe next time. But for this one here, we're just going to hold it on and then uh, we're going to paint the glue once it dries, make it sort of a glued. Uh, if you want to like solder, I suppose you could do it silver to be able to get soldered on. But uh, for the sake of this, we're, we're just going to glue it. So we're now at the point we should have our two wings. Both of them should be roughly about the same size. If you put them together, you should roughly measure up. Don't need to be absolutely perfect, but try the best you can. Trim them down if you have to. Don't worry if you have to cut a bit off. You can always just repaint it, you just respray it. Uh, I didn't bother filming spraying it because once again I'm sure you know how to spray paint. Now one of the things to do with foam is sometimes the uh, paint can soak into it. So you may have to do one or two coats. Uh, it can depend, maybe three coats. So what we're going to do next is we are going to fit the wing onto the helmet. Now, the putty is hardened, so now we're going to attach our wings. So the first thing to do is to look at your helmet and decide where the front is. Now remember, the screw is going to be going to the base of the wing. So what you might want to do is move, is make sure the screw is the furthest to the front. So if you look at where it is, Looking at mine, how far along the screw is, this looks like it's more suited to be the front. So it would go on that way. There we go. And it will fit the wings onto the two screws there. Now, we're going to hop the other one, like I said. And if you have, if you do notice any imperfection in the wing, a little bit of foam that you can see under or whatever. Don't worry, we will touch that up at the end. Uh, listen, it's a little bit of gold paint or paint brushing. Just touch it up, it's fine. So this is the last chance to check your helmet because you don't want to have to be respraying this with wings on it because then you have to cover the wings and do all that. So, a quick check of the helmet. Make sure it is pretty good. It looks fine. Sometimes a little bit of something showing through, like you see a wee bit of green coming through the front there, only a little bit, just a touch, it gives it that more of that look of stainless steel, uh, bear in mind, you know, slightly tarnished steel, you can have that slight green to it, so I don't really mind, I think it makes it look a bit better, so, like I said, this is the front, I'm going to sit this down with the front facing me, so I know what it ends the front, uh, just in case if you get me this or you can get that masking tape and stick it to the front the bit that you're going to be classifying as the front of the helmet then you know what it's for so hot glue gun if you don't want a hot glue gun like I said you could just try and super glue it but you would have a little bit of a you would end up with a little bit of a screw 
may have to stick it out. Hang this up here. Right. So we'll let that heat up. And I'll look at how this first one's going to be going on. So looking at it, lining it up, as you can see there, it'll be sitting flush against the screw. That was my phone that went off. Me and what's the girl art tone from Joss Whedon's Mutant Enemy. Sorry about that. Take a second at Asylum, I think. First video already in unprofessional skill. Right. Now, if your wing starts to curl up, the drying and the paint, things like that, curl the foam, eh, once it's completely dry, put it in some paper towels, put it in a book. You know, it's, it'll flatten it out. Lucky enough, mine doesn't look like it's curled up too much. Eh, no, it looks fine. One of the good things with spray paint as well, especially indoors on foam, is heat will make it dry faster. If you have to, use a blow dryer or a hair dryer if you're, you know, not American. Eh, or my daughter's Hello Kitty hair dryer. That will do it. Now, this one should be heating up quite nicely now. Let's just once again double check my front. Hot glue dries very, very quickly. And it's called hot glue for a reason. It's very hot, so try not to get any in your hands. I'm sorry, you just uh, burned your finger and it's not too bad, but that was the first couple of times it happens. Now, my hot glue will harden fully in a few minutes. Now I can see when I'm looking at it, it's not flush against the bottom. When I do that, I can see there's a gap. So I just want to push it down against and hold it there wherever the glue dries. Now, like I said, hot glue will not take long. It will take a couple of seconds usually. Fully dry, you better leave it for a bit longer. Now you want to do the same thing to the other side. So you get both your wings attached. Now try and line up your wings as well so they're running straight. You don't want one running that way, then another that way, or both out. So check it from the top as well. Check the sides. So you're ready for the second wing. Now I'm still not completely happy how loose that can be. Just see if we can reposition that. So this way you want to try and cut Now, if I 
the same as I can still see the gap there. That is gonna annoy me. Funny thing is, I can't see the gap in person, I can only see it with the camera. So, okay. That's something that's really technically very unnoticeable in reality. Hmm. Only from a certain angle, I think. But, on the head, see it on. That is absolutely fine. So, next one. Was the end shown? We're doing this quite cheaply, so I think what I'll do this time is I'm going to put a bit of hot glue straight onto the wing before I attach it. That looks good. I'm just going to position it straight on. the screw if you want to try and completely cover the screw last thing you want is a bit of screw sticking out especially if you're going to be wearing this to the likes of a con or something yeah, you can get very funny about random bits of metal sticking out yeah. all right nice let's cool down now after the glue cools down we're just gonna use a brush and touch up the hot glue with some glue paint you don't really have to do that, I mean, the hot glue dries sort of a yellowy clear anyway, making it pretty unnoticeable, but, you know, if you don't, whatever you, you don't want it to be too noticeable. Uh, we're also going to touch up a couple of bits, I can see a little bit of pink showing through here, because uh, I used a pink foam, so we'll do that. But, basically, there you go, G Garrett's helmet. Basic snail, basic model, using smaller wings than the ones I've bought the snails. Uh, I have not tarnished this one the way that I've tarnished one of snails. Now if you want to know how to tarnish that, I'm just going to tell you very quickly, it's very simple. Uh, boot polish, liquid boot polish, put it on it, shine it on, leave it on for a couple of seconds, wipe it off. Very easy, very simple, works very well. Uh, another way of doing it is if you want something green showing through, it's when you first spray paint it. Throw some water on it, just water in your fingers and just splash it on. Uh, you'll let the paint dry with a little bit of water on it. After a couple of minutes, sort of wipe the water off and you'll have some little dots of green showing through. There we go. Little bits of hot glue sitting loose before I actually switch the hot glue button off. Right, and that pretty damn good actually. Actually looks a bit better than the one I've got on the stairs. I like the wings more than this one. I like the smaller wings. They actually, they fit it better. I don't originally say I like the bigger wings because I like the, I like the comic book style but I think obviously with the helmet, being a smaller helmet, I would have been better with that. Now, like I said, molding. If you have to do a couple of things different, the looks of the, the molding putty, the putty that we used to hold the screen, if you have that putty, I'm pretty sure you could use hot glue for that. If you want hot glue, you probably could super glue them on, but I wouldn't want to bet on that. Uh, you don't want something failing on you in the middle of a con. Uh, but, this is basically your helmet. So I will be doing uh, the jacket as well. I'll be doing the full cosplay. Uh, cons in August, I believe. So I've got a few months yet, uh, but I will be buying a jacket and doing the yellow lightning bolt on it. Whether I decide to do any odd designs or anything down there, like a yellow lines or outlines or anything anywhere on it to try and make it look a bit more interesting, I don't know. Uh, I'm not doing the exact comic book version, but I'm not doing the TV show version of Jake Garrett either. 
Uh, I don't like just the wee like the bowl there. I like the full yellow one. And I don't like just that outline one that the fake Garrick had. Uh, and I don't want to just wear a jumper with the yellow lighting bowl. So uh, we'll touch this up. Like I said, this will go spray paint and we'll see how it looks at the end. So in the end I got a brush, painted a little bit in where the hot glue is. Uh, it's kind of hard to get in. I didn't have any poster paint or anything, so what I did was I just got some gold spray paint, spray paint onto a bit of paper, used the brush just to quickly do that. Uh, that's fine for if you need to do a quick touch up, such as a wee bit of pink or something that was visible on the on the wings. But uh, I didn't have any poster paint or anything, which would have been better for in the glue, just to get that done. But all in all. Completely recognisable. Everybody knows exactly what it is when you see it. They're aware that it is Jay Garrick's helmet. Nice for just a small display piece. Yeah, let's just quickly get mine and we'll compare it. So, as you can see here, the wings on my first one are a lot bigger. I like the big wings, although I actually got to say I'm quite partial to the small wings, it was a bit me. Thinking I might keep that, but I'm not, I'm giving it to my friend. Uh, I might make myself another using that. Uh, once again, I also have the tarnish, as you can see they are very heavy. I've yet to do the whole glue, and I used longer screws for mine because they were bigger wings. But uh, I probably should have used the smaller screws. Probably would be a bit easier to work, a bit easier to cover in hot glue as well. So you're not having to deal too much with that. But all in all, I think it came out very good. I like the difference, I like the comparison. I like it's a lot shinier, it's smaller, I think it's more a it's a sleeker, more modern interpretation of Garrick's helmet. And uh, well I hope my mate appreciates it. So I'd like to keep making more of these videos. Uh, hopefully if I get enough likes and Maybe a few subscribers. I'll see about making as many as I can. Uh, to be honest, I'm probably going to make three or four of them before I even give a damn about subscribers or likes or views. Uh, and then I'll worry about it. Personally, I'm making these for me anyway. <laughs> uh, I make these things anyway, so I'll be making them one way or another, whether I film it or not. But uh, I would very much like to keep filming it and very much like to keep sharing it. And if any of the uh, decides to make their own, I'd like them to maybe comment, see how it went. Uh, obviously though, I'll set up a, a Twitter or an Instagram or something where people will be able to send me pictures of the things that they've made. Uh, maybe even give me some ideas of something that you'd like to see made, something that you've always wanted to make as a prop, but aren't quite sure how to go about it. And I'll see if I can think about a, a cheap and easy way of how to make it. Uh, I'm rather chuffed here. So I'll make some future videos, uh, um, next video will probably be the Pokeball, where we'll look out to make a basic Pokeball. Uh, after that, we will look at, oh, I don't know, not 100% yet. Uh, we'll also be looking at the likes of paper props and things like that. Simple things that you can make yourself just for entertainment's sake. Uh, I'm a very big fan of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, so there's a lot of simple things you can make with that. Uh, the likes of a, a sort of girl high, high school diploma. To be honest, I've made one myself, chances that I would just share the template that I've made. Uh, you'd be able just to fill it in yourself, use a different, you know, type in your name, sign whatever you need to. Um, so until next time guys, I'll see you later on and uh, hopefully we'll keep making these.